Hi guys, this is Luan Skaggs and welcome to the channel. Now first I want to say thanks for all of you guys that left votes on the walls cons saying that you guys want to see the matching side table. Now if you guys haven't seen the walls cons, it would be left at the end of this video or in the description down below. Now this headboard mirror would be coming next video. It's under $10 and it looks amazing. Now let's go make the matching side table. Now for this project, I'll be using these racks that I already had at home. Now I went to the Dollar Tree after I made the wall scones video to see if I could find these racks. And they only have these. They don't have these anymore. And as I told you guys in some comments that I already had all the materials that I used to make the wall scones at home already. So I already had the cooling racks as well. These I had for a very long time. And when I went back to the Dollar Tree, these are the only ones that it has at the Dollar Tree now. Now they are much bigger. So these are about an inch wider than the one that I used and a few inches longer and you only get one. So these are the options that it have now unless you all could find these somewhere else. Now I would look to see if I could find these online and if I could find them online I'd leave them in the description down below. Now for the table I already started using these to make the table because I have them so I decided to use them. Now if you use these from the Dollar Tree, your table would be a bit taller and a bit bigger. Now in order to make it smaller, you could overlap it and tie it with wire in these points right here so that you could get it smaller without having to cut it. And then you could tie it in between here as well just to keep it secure. Now I'm starting with the ones that I had before to make the side table. Now we will take something wrong to light this tin and we would use this to bend the cooling rack. Now we are using something wrong like this because between these areas here they tend to stay straight so this helps give us the curve even in these areas now we'll continue bending the cooling rack until we get the desired shape that we need now if this is your first time here consider subscribing and press the bell icon so you could be notified whenever i upload a new video Once we have the desired shape that we need, we'll join them together like this. Now I'll be using this wire that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and the link for all the materials would be listed in the description down below. Now we'll cut a piece of wire and use this to wrap the cooling racks. Now this is how we wrap the cooling racks together. Now we want to line up these wires so that they keep in a straight line. Now to keep this strong, we could make crisscross in these areas, continue wrapping and then continue making crisscross in all these areas. Now we'll continue this all the way through until we get to the other side. Now that we've attached the cooling racks, we'll take our flower mesh shape wrap and we'll measure how much we need and cut it. Now we will take our E6000 along with our hot glue to put on our flower mesh shape wrap onto the wire. So we'll start from the second row. First put on your E6000 and then we'll put on the hot glue at the end. The hot glue dries a lot faster. We may want to put some hot glue in the middle as well. Now we'll do this for all except the two last rows and then we'll come back. Now we'll attach the two pieces together. We line up our pieces and use wire and wrap it around and attach the pieces together. And we'll do that for the both side. I'll start from the middle and work my way to the end. And you continue this on this side and the other side. 
Now once we have it joined together like this, we would use a flower mesh shape wrap and cover the edges. Now we would use our E6000 along with our hot glue to keep it in place. Now once we have it like this, we'll be gluing on our gems in a diamond shape pattern, just like we did for the wall scones. Now I don't know if you could see this, but we'll continue the same pattern all the way through and then we'll come back. Now when you get to the wire at the halfway point, it's very easy to cover the wire. All you do is put the glue on these two pieces and then onto the wire and then you could stick the gem on it and it would cover up the wire. So this is how you see about this section. And this is how you will cover up the wire. Now we'll continue gluing on the gems until we're finished. Now for the top and the bottom, you could go with any shape that you want. You could do a square, you could do an oval, whatever fits your space, that would be perfectly fine. Now you could take a piece of paper and measure how wide you want, and you could measure it to fit the space that you have as well. So your space might be bigger, it might be smaller, so you could make your base to suit that. So I'll make mine nine and a half inches across by 16 inches wide. Now when you want to get the exact shape on all sides, it's better to work in quarters. So we'll fold this in quarter and then we'll draw out our shapes. Now I want nine and a half inches here, but since we fold it in half, we will fold the measuring tape in half as well. So we'll go nine and a half and fold it in half. And then we'll mark it. So we'll get 16, we'll fold it in half or whatever your measurement is. Then we'll mark the point. Now we'll use our markings to make the curve. And it doesn't matter what curve, as long as we have it on all sides, it would look just fine. Now I'll be drawing out the shape on an Amazon cardboard. Now we'll cut out two of these. Now I've cut some one inch strips of poster board so I could glue it around the sides. Now we'll bend it so it could go around the sides. Now we'll glue it onto the sides using our hot glue gun. Now you could use stones or whatever you want to make sure that your base is secure. I think that cement is just a lot easier. Now you could put a piece of plastic in the inside so that the cement won't leak out. To me this is a lot easier because we'll have a nice flat surface when we put on the top piece. Now while the concrete is drying, we'll go ahead and work on our reflective paper. We will trace out our cardboard onto our poster board first and then stick the reflective paper on top of that so that we have a nice smooth surface. We want to give ourselves a little bit of room so we don't cut directly on the line.
Now, if there's too much bubbles before you try to work it out, raise it up and then stick it back. Now, this is how you get a smooth surface with the reflective paper. Now, to make the strips for the side, all we do is mark out the strips that we want on a poster board and then we'll stick it on. That makes it much easier to do. So we'll turn the side with the marking down this way and we'll stick the reflective paper on top of that. Now we want to do a small section at a time and make sure that that is smooth and then continue. And it's very easy to do it like that. It makes it so much easier and it makes your work come out so much nicer. Now we could cut down our lines to make the strips. Now we'll do this for all the pieces. Now that the concrete is dry, I cut the extra paper from around it. And now we're going to put the pieces together. Now the reflective paper that we glued onto the poster board, we'll stick it onto our cardboard. Now we don't really want to use the glue gun for this because that will create lumps. So you want to use E6000 or something like that to stick it together. Now that we have it stuck together, we'll find the center so that we could attach the base. Now we can make a small hole in the middle so that we know that this is the center. Now we could peel off the reflective paper and add the base. Now we'll line it up to the center and we have the hole in the middle for the guide. You want to make a few little marks, not too much, that it would show so that we know where to place the glue. and we could stick it in place. Now once this is dry, we would use some zip ties for added security to make sure that these stays in place. So we'll make a few holes where we could attach the zip tie. Now for some added support, we could use some craft sticks in the back, right between the zip ties. And we want to try to get this flat. Now once we're done, this is what it would look like. We've added extra craft sticks for extra support. Now before we glue on the top part, we could glue on the strips to the side. Now to glue it to the base, I'm using hot glue and E6000. Now if you want your base to be strong and very secure, I suggest you pour some concrete in the base and let it dry. Then make some marks so that the other concrete could be attached and then point some extra concrete and then put your base on top of that so that it sinks into the concrete but not all the way to the bottom. That's why we put the first layer of concrete and this will make sure that your base doesn't go anywhere. Now to cover up the edges, I'm using this, but you could use the flower mesh shape wrap. Now what I like about this, it looks like crushed mirror glass, and it seems to be held together by some type of glue that melts. Now when you put the hot glue on it, it molds to fit whatever you put it on. 
Now this is the top of the table. I glued on a strip of the reflective paper and now I'm gluing on a strip of the bling ribbon. Now we will take a wooden dowel and cut it to the length of your base. Now we pre-drill the hole in the wooden dowel and I cut a piece of wood. It does not have to be perfect and we'll attach this onto the wooden dowel. Now we'll paint it white so that it would reflect the light when we glue on our lights. Now we'll use zip ties to attach the lights to the pole. Now I got this mirror on Amazon and this is the way you hang it up. Now I'll be gluing the lights right in the center here. And this is what would keep it on the table. Now you just place your lights in the base of the table and make sure that it's centered. Now if you have small kids to make sure that it's safe, you may want to glue the table together. Now it's just me and my husband, so I would leave it like this so that I could change the lights. And I would show you that at the end of the video. Now this is the way it looks in the daytime. All the lights that we tied up on the pole does not show through at all. It looks really nice and elegant and really rich. I'm not sure if the camera is doing it justice, but it looks really nice in real. Now to turn on the lights, I picked up this remote control from on Amazon and the link for all the materials needed for this project would be found in the description down below. Now all you have to do is plug it in and this is what triggers the remote control to turn on the lights. And this is the way you turn it on and off. Now this is the wall sconce at night. Now this is the side table at night. And this is how it looks using a green light. So you could completely change the look of the table just by the lights that you use. Now this is how it looks with a green light in the table and red light in the wall scones. So by the colors you could mix and match and just have fun. So if this is something that you like and is something that you'd like to try out, I'd love to know it in the comment section down below. So thanks for taking the time out to watch this video. You have a blessed and awesome day. Now if you like this video, you may also like these as well. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you in the next one.